right, it's here. <laughs> What's up? Hello, it's Lit Life with Miranda Reads, and today we are reacting to the 2020 Goodreads Choice Awards. As you all know, I'm a huge, huge fan, and I look forward to this every year. Just four weeks ago, when the opening rounds occurred, I did a video reacting to all of the Goodreads nominees. In that four weeks, since I have literally made it my job to read as many 2020 books that were on that list as physically possible. So that way when I react to it, I feel like I have a pretty good educated guess, I guess, educated response to what is coming up. All right, let's get to it. And we're gonna start off with best fiction of 2020. And the winner is The Midnight Library. So The Midnight Library. So this one banks on the concept of there's a library of infinite books out there. Ones that tell you your life as it is and tells you of your life as it could be. If you could see how your life could have turned out differently, would you want to? And in this particular story, we follow Nora and she travels to the Midnight Library and she has to evaluate her life and determine whether or not she actually wants to make those changes to her careers, her breakups, etc or if she should stay with the life that she has chosen before. This one sounds super good, and I'm not just saying that because it has library in the title, because you know me, that's like my weakness. As soon as it says like library or books or literary, like I just want to read that book. <laughs> Didn't get to it, but I will get to that one. Our second and third runners up are Anxious People and American Dirt. Anxious People was an incredible book. I just finished it over the weekend, and it just, it's the kind of book where you're laughing and then you're tearing up and then you're laughing another paragraph later. It is just so good. The next runner up is American Dirt and that's another one I read and I think it was really, really good. It is a lot more of a serious tone, but the characters are amazing. The development is amazing. The direction of the plot is incredible. So it's also a very, very good read. I'm kind of curious about the placement of the others. These ones are on the list. Oh, I, I didn't want to read that one. Oh, I just add that one real fast. Luster. Hmm. Like the actual description of the book calls it like a darkly comedic novel. And I guess that's part of my fault because I went in there with this expectation that it was going to be kind of like a dark humor book, which is like amazing. And I love dark humor. However, when I read it, it was just really depressing and really like, oh man, this girl needs to do better for herself. I'm honestly surprised it made it this far because it was just such a miserable experience reading it. Next up, we have the results for mysteries and thrillers. And I just read one that was really, really good. And it was like, guest list, guest list, the guest list. And it was really good. And it was on the previous rounds, like the semifinals. If I was a betting woman, I would say this is like worthy of being top one but I'm not entirely confident with Miss because I haven't read a lot of those. So I would say it's in top five. That That is my guess. The guest list is in the top five. And did I call it or did I call it? Okay, well, actually I did a little bit better than just calling it. It was the top one. So the guest list is gorgeous. I don't really want to give much away because half of the fun of this one was truly just experiencing the journey. But suffice to say, we follow Jules and Will. They're getting married on a remote island in Ireland. Something happens. Someone ends up dead. Them and all of their guests are cut off on that island. Suffice to say, it was really good. I didn't know what was happening half the time, but also I loved it. Okay, so looking at what else is on this list, Sundown Motel, I called that one like way earlier. I Like in a video I made like way at the beginning of the year about like the best 2020 books. So I called that one. The Wives, I finished that one. I don't know. I'm a little bit shocked that it's above The Devil in the Dark Water. The Wives was okay, but to me the ending just like fizzled everything for me. Stuart Turgeon's Devil in the Dark Water. I did say in my monthly recap that it was a gosh dang good book, but also not mind-blowing like the Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. All right, historical fiction. Right off the bat, I'm going to tell you, 
I don't think I read anything on there. I got the copy of the Jane Austen Society, which I've been voting for every single round just purely because I like Jane Austen, which, you know, that's just how I pick my book sometimes. I like the title when I vote. But if I had to predict, I would say that one would be kind of high-ish up. But also, I just, I don't know anything else about historical fiction, so... Alright, so Jane Austen did make it to the top five. This gives me hope, though. I'm really excited to read this one. I have not heard actually that much about this one. However, it is 102,000 votes, which, to put it into this perspective, both the fiction and the mystery have 70-ish thousand. It's like that 70,000 is a difference between The Vanishing Half and the next runner-up which is like crazy and I definitely need to read this one now. This one is set in the 1950s. We follow the lives of two twin sisters. One decides to stay in her hometown and live with her people. And the other one decides to pass as white and not tell her white husband about her true genetic history slash past. So then it happens that they come together and there's a lot of emotional reveals that are supposed to happen. All right, next up we have best fantasy. And the only one I remember is the one I voted on, and that would be uh, Sarah J. Maas's Crescent City. As I've said before, the first half of that book is a little bit rough to get into. And I think because of that, it would put it lower. I'm going to say it's going to be around the middle-ish. So we'll see how right I am. Oh, okay. So, um, not right. Whoops. I guess I should be pleasantly surprised by this, that everyone loves it so much. In this world, there's a city, Crescent City, and it's divided into different groups. There's werewolves, there's vampires, there's fair folk, there's etc, etc, etc. Someone ends up dead, and our main character, who is kind of unassuming and low on the totem pole, needs to be protected by this super hot guy, and together they have to figure out this mystery of who's murdering all of these people. And I will say, it is very, very good. But like that second half is like where it picks up. The first half was really rough for me. Now the runner up is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, which I get. And I think these two were both very good. All right, what else we got on here? Um, oh, I did read A Deadly Education, which is like Harry Potter, but everyone like dies. But in a good way. Okay, I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but like Essentially, everything's trying to kill these kids at the school, and then they're trying to, like, just survive and graduate in finals and all that stuff. I think that one was really good. And uh, I think that's it that I read on this list. Then romance, um, I don't remember. I have no predictions. Let's find out. Oh, <laughs> that was my vote. I wanted to be a higher. All right, so from Blood and Ash is the winner for the best romance. We follow Poppy, and she's a maiden meaning that she has to spend her entire life secluded and not touched, not interacting, until her ascension. And it's a lonely existence. Enter Hawk, who is like, becomes her protector, essentially. And he begins to make her angry, he begins to make her question life, and sparks begin to fly, and she has to choose between her duty and doing what feels good to her. I definitely wanted to read this one, and I thought it looked really, really good. But if you look at it, it's kind of crazy how different it looks compared to all of the other books. Because, like, it's just so dark and fantasy-ish. I'm very excited to read this one. I did read Beach Read, and I would say it's about three and a half stars for me. It was a little bit different, but also kind of the same as a lot of romance books. This one was hands down my favorite romance of the year. These two guys, so cute, so much great banter. And... I thought this one was a sweet romance, something to talk about. I enjoyed it quite a bit. So my vote for science fiction was Christopher Poloni's To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. That one was really well written, I think, but I'm also like very biased because I love Christopher Poloni's Aragon series. So I don't know if anyone would vote with me for that one. Am I good? At calling these or am I good at calling these? So to sleep in a sea of stars we follow Kira and she's like an alien biologist so she goes to different planets and she categorizes the microbes on that planet. She accidentally touches the wrong microbe and all of a sudden there's something like binding to her skin 
and she wakes up and she's fully encased in a suit, a somewhat sentient suit. And from there, she has to save the universe. I think this one was really good and I loved reading at the end why this one took Christopher so long to write. He decided to learn the physics behind his science fiction so he could accurately depict what theoretical physicists are thinking space travel will be like, which I think is really cool. Haro the Ninth, I did read Gideon the Ninth this year and it was a freaking amazing. Haro the Ninth, I think if it's anything, and I mean anything like the first one, it totally deserves its position there. I think that would be it. Oh wait, I did read Mother Code. Very good. Very happy that it made the list. All right, horror. Okay, so for horror, I did read a few of them that made it to the list. Um, there's a Southern Baptist Guide to Slaying Vampires, and there's the Mexican Gothic that I've read. I'm gonna predict that at least one of those two would have made it first because they were both just such good books. I think it's a coin toss for me. So let's see what everyone voted. Ah, Mexican Gothic and hey, okay, so I was really close, wasn't I? So I read Mexican Gothic, I read Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires and they made it to the top three and the middle one is Stephen King, which honestly, like, there's so many Stephen King fans, it's like almost guaranteed to make it up there. Mexican Gothic, though, was such a good book. This one follows Noemi, and her cousin recently got married, and they were like two peas in a pod. She gets a letter from her cousin, and it was just a very odd letter, like just not what she would typically expect from her cousin. So she decides to investigate. She gets to her cousin's new home, and things start acting really weird there. And it's a very slow, creeping horror book. And I really enjoyed it. The atmosphere for this one was stunning. And the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, like I said, like you throw book, book club, library, literary in the title, like I just want to read it. And that's why I picked that one up. If I had to predict why the Southern Book Club one is at third opposed to first. I would say the middle sagged a bit. It gets really intense in the beginning, it dips and then comes back at the end. But that dip was a little bit hard for me to get through, to be honest. So it is still, it, I would still recommend it though. Like to be clear, I would still recommend it. Just if I had to choose one, I would definitely say Mexican Gothic deserved it win. Uh, all these ones I wanted to read so bad, I just didn't get to them. All right, okay, so humor. Um, I can't remember what I voted for for the humor ones. I don't know who's gonna win. So let's just see. Oh, Strange Planet, that's really sweet. This Strange Planet is focuses on a group of aliens and they kind of explain human interactions and human things through an alien's perspective. And it's kind of fun just to kind of like step outside of yourself and like kind of look at like how weird some of the things we are is. How weird some of the things that we do is. I give up. I can't get that sentence right. This is, I, I remember seeing these memes like everywhere and it's kind of fun that that one won. Still haven't read that one. Whoops. <laughs> All right. Don't know any of these books enough to comment. All right, so then we have nonfiction, which I just kind of voted at random because I didn't really read any of these. Oh, stamped, racism, anti-racism, and you. And it traces the history of racism in America. And this is actually the shortened version of a 2016 novel that came out that had a pretty similar title, which is stamped from the beginning, The Definitive History of Racist Ideals in America. And it sounds like from when I read it that they condensed it and cut out about 300 pages and then outcomes stamped racism, anti-racism, and you. So I'm actually reading a different book by um, Ibram right now. I'm reading the How to Be an Anti-Racist, but I would be curious in this one. So, okay. I don't know any of the other ones in here, so I can't really give my opinion. Memoirs. Um, I don't think I've read any memoirs this year, but if I had to guess, Obama published one, so that one's gonna be pretty high on the list. Yep, Obama. 
we have Barack Obama kind of reflecting on his life and his accomplishments and what brought him to where he is today. I have not read it yet, but like I've heard really good things. And when I read Michelle Obama's book, that was amazing. So like I think 90% sure, 95% sure that this would be a good one too. Okay, so moving on, we have history biography. Don't really have an opinion on this. I don't really read that many of them. So this is casts, but in America. So kind of like the social structure and what brought it about. And I think it sounds pretty interesting. I don't know, like I don't really read many historical or biography books. So like, uh, I feel like my opinion isn't very good on those, but it, it looks good. All right, I feel like I wish I, I wish I had more to say, but oh well. Science and technology, I don't remember what I voted for. I don't think I really read any of the ones in here. Oh, David Attenborough, good on him. This one focuses on the changes to the planet that have happened over the course of the author's life and also the science behind it and the impact that he feels will come from the future of these actions. I think that makes sense. Anyway, I do love David Attenborough's narration voice, and this one sounds pretty interesting. I will add it to my to-reads. And the rest of them, I wish I knew more, but I don't. Hey, The Book of Eels. That one looked fun. Okay. Food and cookbooks. I only read David Chang's Eat a Peach, which was actually a book about food, not a cookbook. So I don't know how high that one would rank. Maybe in the top 10. I ah, yep, see, see. I did, I did predict that at least. This is the Barefoot Contessa cookbook and it is quite the cookbook. Um, from what I've heard, she is very, very popular. She has a lot of really yummy, really simple foods. So I think it works out pretty well for that. All right, graphic novels. I don't remember what I voted for. Heartstopper Volume 3. This book is all about kind of coming out. After you've come out to yourself, you have to come out to your community. And this graphic novel focuses on that, which I like the concept of that. Okay, so then we have poetry. The only poetry book I've read was the Margaret Atwood one that came out. Um, I feel like I'm terrible at predicting poetry. I feel like I'm terrible at reading poetry. I think it's just because I'm too impatient. Like, I just want to read the story. And when it's poetry, I just, I'm like, oh, I feel like I have to read it really slow and I don't like that. Oh, oh. okay. So it is actually at the top. Um, so Dearly is a set of poems by Margaret Atwood. And I feel like I just don't know anything about poetry, but it just has a lot of different subjects. Like there's one about a cat with dementia. There's one about updated werewolves in modern society. There's one that talks about zombies. Um, yeah, I did find that I liked the supernatural poems in this one. The rest of them are kind of like, eh, it's okay. All right, so then we have debut novel. I can't remember what I voted for for this one. Oh, I know. Now I remember what I voted. Cemetery Boys. Oh, that was such a good one. This one focuses on Alex, her son, Briar, and her babysitter, Amira. Alex and her son are white. Amira is black. One day... Alex is having a crisis and asks the babysitter to take her son to the supermarket as a distraction. Amira does so, but then people there begin to accuse Amira of kidnapping the child. I haven't read this one. I don't know much about it other than the description. It sounds like it could be really interesting, but I just, I don't know. I don't know. I do know though that the runner up, Cemetery Boys, was amazing. Loved it, loved the couple, excellent read. Um, of the rest of them, you already know my thoughts on Luster. So next one is Young Adult Fiction. Of that one, I have read quite a few of those. Um, I know that I read one called Felix, which focuses on a trans boy, and he's trying to find out who he is on the inside, as well as deal with some pretty awful bullies. There's a plain one that focuses about the crash of the Malaysian Airlines and then the impact that has on families. I read Only Mostly Devastated and it's all about two boys falling in love 
Mid Strategy. And I know I read The Gravity of Us, which is kind of like a somewhat futuristic one where some people are going to Mars and their families are trying to deal with the fallout. Of those four, I voted for Only Mostly Devastated. But if I had to guess, I think Felix would win or be very, very close. It was very good. Okay. Well, I guess I was a little bit wrong. Felix did make the top four, which is 110% deserved. But Clap When You Land, which is the plane one, I can remember the title, that one won first. There's Kamina and her sister Yahara. Now, both of them have the same dad, but they don't know the other one existed until their dad dies on the plane. And then it's like everything comes out in the open and they have to decide how to pick up the pieces of mourning someone that they just didn't know as well as they thought they did and also getting to know their own families. I think it was very good. I did kind of like Felix a bit more. I wonder where though I might... No! How is that one so low? Oh, it was so good. I definitely think this one should be way higher. Oh well. All right, young adult fantasy and science fiction. So this whole time, I'm actually wearing my high school t-shirt, Vegetarian Vampire. I was obsessed, to put it mildly, with vampires and Edward and Twilight and everything. And of course, when Midnight Sun came out, that was like my number one choice for everything. Midnight Sun is Twilight, but from Edward's, the vampire's perspective. My fingers are so crossed. Oh, I was wrong again. Dang it. Though, I do get this. The Queen of Nothing is the final of the Folk of the Air series, and that just came out a little while ago. That one is a gorgeous, gorgeous, dark, scary fairy book a la Holly Black. We follow a human girl in the land of fairies and a cruel prince that just might happen to have a good inside. I can definitely see why that one's up there. I'm not surprised by Ballard. Oh, I just got this one in the library, so I don't know if this one deserves its spot yet. I'm surprised that Midnight Sun is this far down, but it's all right. Um, the rest of it, I, I, I would agree with all the ones I've read. All right, so we have middle grade and picture books, which I have no stake in because I don't think I read any of these on this list. So we have Rick Rorian's Taro Tower of Nero, and this is like the last one in the Titans of Apollo. Is it Titans of Apollo? Trials of Apollo series. It's the fifth book in the series, but still got a lot of votes, so it kind of indicates it's really, really good. The rest of them I have not read, though I do want to read this one. This is uh, by Chris Colfer, the guy who plays, um, what's his face from Glee? Oh well. And the last section is picture books. And hey, this is the same guy who won the top one nonfiction. This is the same guy. So this is Anti-Racist Baby, which looks like a be a picture book about race that is kind of age appropriate, which also looks quite good. We made it, guys. That was a lot of fun, if I admit. That was a ton of fun, and I'm so happy that I got to do it. Goodreads Choice is over, but now we just got to start reading for next year. Thank you so, so much for watching and happy reading. Bye.